can be dauntless. Maybe for some, it's adventure, and for others, it could be just an element of fame and glory. All right, so there's 20 to 25 knots of wind coming from the north and northwest. And we're just doing the same route. We always, we always go up to the bridge to Indianapolis to the base shore bridge and turn around and come back. It's been the night ahead. It's not McGothy. We always be calling McGothy because we're from Missouri. But it's Magothy. It's, it's Magothy. So I've been saying it wrong for Exactly what I said was going to happen. We got out here to the middle of the Chesapeake and the gusts of wind gusted up to 25 and it blew the boat all the way down past this tow rail. Blew out one of the windows. Water got rushing in. So we had to reef this back sail to uh, be able to take this gust of wind that comes, that comes in every once in a while. Because So now we've slowed down to like five and a half knots. I can't have both sails out. If I have both sails out, those gusts will come and knock the boat all the way over on its side almost. So you can't do it. But we're almost we're almost to maybe in a half hour we'll be to the, our anchorage. And then we'll go down below and clean up all the mess because we didn't store everything away like we supposed to. Because I spent a day getting everything in order all the work I did through the week on the outside of the boat on the deck. I didn't have time to organize everything down below. So everything's standard. that was gushing water yesterday and you know five miles an hour on two full sails open is a lot because we were getting like gussed up to 20 and then we got out into the open part of the Chesapeake and, and it started gussing up to 25 that extra five put the boat over on its tow rail and all there, there's one two three four five there's like 16 portholes and they're all old and some of them are broken so this, these, what's broken on them is these top hinges. Like if I 
unscrewed these down at the bottom, this would just come off. It's supposed to fold up. But, so when it was on the tow rail, a lot of pressure on them damn, a lot of pressure on it. Water's gushing in. I had to pull, I brung in half the sail. And then that was that, and everything was back to normal. But, uh, you know, it's like heat. A little bit of five degrees, 10 degrees on the heat scale is a lot. Same thing with the two open sails. Five, 10 mile an hour, an extra five miles an hour and over is a lot. And that's just something I just learned yesterday. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff. Like our last video showed us going and trying to leave and go to Florida. That was last Thanksgiving. That was a year ago. So a lot of stuff has happened in, in the last year when it comes to progress on making this boat run safer. So like this chain plate, you guys remember when I did a video on how to fix a chain plate? I've evolved. So this had to be taken out. This had to be all fiberglass back in, fixed to where water can't get inside this core. And these are the one of the main chain plates. There's three uh, cables attached to it from up top, and uh, that takes that took me three days to do one. And there's four of them. The motor, you know, I had to remarinize it. That's what they call it, remarinizing. But the it was like took four months to get to get the parts, and I'm still having an issue with the antifreeze. I'm losing antifreeze, and it's not leaking out. It's going out the exhaust somewhere. I can't I can't seem to figure it out but let's go up on top I'll show you some of the deck work I've done so we've been taking the same like when we go out on a trip we usually take the same we go to the same place anchor the same place something that's uh, familiar that way I don't know it just seems like a safe thing to do when you're learning to sail you know so the plan was to go to Florida last year and work on the teak decks there but that got put on hold because we had to do all the engine work and stuff. So I went ahead and ripped the teak off the deck. So look at this. So you see all these holes, all this right here, that's where every screw hole where the teak used to be screwed on. So you have to drill half inch holes all the way down to the other, it's a sandwich. On the bottom there's fiberglass, in the middle there's wood, and on the top is the fiberglass. You drill all the way through, and I made, it makes like little pedestals, so when you walk on it, it strengthens it up to where it's not, it's stable. So this right here is one of the old skylights, and we're just covering them up. We're not even, we just filled them in with fiberglass, and that's the end of them. The, the prisms that were there, they're all chipped up and broken. You'd have to do all kinds of work to get them to fit in there right because the teak is gone. And you'd have to do a whole bunch of stuff and router and do stuff to make it work. It's just better like this. It's not going to leak anymore. So this is like one of the skylights on the other side that's done. It's been sanded, smooth. You can't even tell it's there anymore. And I've just kind of covered up with cheap... Uh, deck paint to keep the UVs from directly hitting the, the fiberglass, the bare fiberglass. And then this is that chain plate. So there's one here, there's one over there, there's one back there and one back there that are has three. So all of those got fiber, taken out, fiberglass back in. And then this, this one, if you guys remember, this one was the one that had the crack in it and stuff it's still a little bubbled up but there's no way to fix it so there's screw i took bolts and bolt like there's like from here way over to here it's just like bolt 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 this bent that sandwiched all that back together and then this has been refiberglass and this hasn't been sanded yet so this is super strong now you'll never have to deal with this again and you know it's a lot of work this took three days, the other one took three days, the other one took three days, the other one took three days. On these lower shrouds, I, I did it a little different. Instead of taking this whole chain plate out from the bottom and refiberglassing it back in, <coughs> I just cut out 
and then I put this fiberglass, this is fiberglass board, this half inch thick and structural fiberglass. I cut all that out, cut, took out all the balsa wood, epoxied this back in, and then filled it in, and then I'll just fill this all back in with fiberglass all the way up to here, and make little angle cuts around this, and then fill it full of, that's butyl, and then fill it full of butyl, and that's the end of that. So there's like one, two, three, there's four of those. So that, these take, you can do one of these in a day. So that's not too bad, doing it this way. But there's just so much labor involved. I mean, look, there's these, all need rebedded. There's there's pulleys all up front that need be rebedded. So this, 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 and then all these stanchions, all these stanchion bases have to come off and get rebedded. And uh, then these. These, all these uh, cleats, cleats, they had to rebed it. It took two. It took a day just to do two of these because it's not like you can just get to it. Sometimes you have to cut stuff out of the way. You have to go into the cabinetry, cut stuff out of the way, get your hand all up in some weird way to get to the stuff. And I haven't even started on these stanchions yet, so. That's what's been going on. And we just been coming out here going sailing and trying to learn a little bit more about sailing before we take off. And, and then Shelly's working while I'm doing this. And uh, we might leave the boat for the winter in here in Delaware and take off and come back up to Kansas City and find a house to flip. Because we need money. Because most of the labor stuff's done. Once this deck's done, all the labor stuff will be done. Big labor, famous last words. But the, and we need cash. So we need like, the, this boat needs a new autopilot. And it's like, I don't know, six, seven grand. And this, it needs new refrigerator units. They work now, but they just need new ones. They're old. And the air conditioners need new. And the front Genoa is old and it needs it needs to be new. So to try to get this boat safe to where it can take an ocean, you know, an ocean, ocean passage, some of the stuff needs we need new stuff. So some of the things we made mistakes, like when we first got to the boat, and when we bought all this line, this line here should have been three eighths. So when you furl this up, or try to unfurl it it gets snagged up because this furling line is too big. It's half inch and it's supposed to be three eighths because it barely fit on the spool. So it just gets, and then, so you're in the middle of trying to unfurl the sail or furl it out in heavy sea, sea state. And this thing gets jammed up and you have to come out here to the, on the bow to fix it. So this, these furler lines, need to get changed back down to three eighths. So it's like nine, nine o'clock in the morning. So we just got to anchor. We got like 300 feet of, of uh, chain out. So we're gonna pull the chain in and we're gonna rock and roll and go back to the marina. And uh, today's supposed to be like light winds. Yesterday, y'all seen it. It was good wind. Today, a little bit easier. I think we'll be able to sail maybe, I don't know. We'll see, it's probably like three or four knots. I might be able to get four knots with the wind we got today. If not, well, I'll just motor sail. And uh, so let's get this let's get this anchor up.
our, I forget what you call that, our, stu our, our snubber. Stubber, snubber. Yeah, it's one of those. It's pretty good size. I almost had, I was at Bacon Sales, and there was four of those for dock lines that size that were probably 20 feet long each one for 100 bucks each. There was four of them. I should have got them. Bacon's a great place in Annapolis to go. If you're ever in Annapolis and you look for used stuff, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug it. Rob, the guy this guy named Rob. Especially if you're a new sailor, if you got a question for any for about anything, go to Rob. Ask him; he's gonna help you out. So, the only thing now is Shelly's got to go back there, bring the boat forward while I uh, bring the row in, bring the rope in. So. I think we're gonna end up motoring seven hours back to our to our uh, marina. So that's the video for the that's our video, and we'll probably spend the day cruising back. And I think we're gonna all the video footage that we got today. We're gonna try to make a decent video, so maybe we can get some more subscribers. It's, I'm gonna tell you something, video is harder than sailing. So thanks for watching.